Alright guys, I'll just take one minute of your precious time. Just wanted to let all of you know that if you want to practice all these questions using artificial intelligence and practice on a portal which is as similar as your actual PT exam which will give you exact scores which you are likely to get in your exam, just register on languageacademy.com.au. You can practice as many questions. On top of that, you can get instant feedback, instant scores and instant suggestions on what are the things you need to work on and how to improve your mistakes and turn them into your strength. You can also take a full scored mock test. You'll get a full scorecard. You'll get in-depth analysis. You'll get tutor's feedback. One mock test is available for free and four sectional mock tests are available for free. You just need to go on languageacademy.com.au. Register over there. Use Google Chrome, log in and practice and make sure you get your desired score at the earliest. Now you can continue with the video or you can just log on to languageacademy.com.au and practice all these questions over there as well. All the very best. I'll see you very soon. People and the environment. Information such as the unemployment rate or number of crimes against the person are presented alongside data on people's thoughts and feelings. For example, satisfaction with our jobs or leisure time and fear of crime. Together, a richer picture on how society is doing is provided. President Trump has warned Turkey's President Erdogan that foreign interference is complicating the situation in Libya. It comes after Turkey MPs approved a bill allowing the military to be deployed to interfere in Libya's civil war in support of the UN-backed government in Tripoli. The United States is to ban a number of popular e-cigarette flavors to curb the rising use of vaping products among teenagers. However, menthol and tobacco flavors will be allowed to remain on the market and large refillable vaping devices are completely exempt from the ban.
It was another roller coaster week for energy prices. After OPEC and its allies resisted calls to increase output, the price of Brent crude surpassed $80 per barrel and reached its highest level in three years. The cartel said it would stick to the gradual increases in output it agreed to over the summer. The energy shortage rattled other financial markets too, as investors worried about the fallout. In America and Europe government bond yields climbed. In Britain the yield on 10-year gilts jumped to its highest since May 2019. A hormone called relaxin helps loosen up pregnant women's hips. Without it, the pain of delivery would be unbearable. It's job done. However, relaxing lingers in female bodies for up to a year. When softer ligaments make new mothers more prone to injury, as Jessica Ennis Hill, an Olympic champion heptathlete, discovered in training after giving birth in 2014. Five years later Dame Jessica started Jenny's, a fitness app to help other women perform safe postnatal workouts. It now lets users optimize workouts for the different phases of their menstrual cycles, and has just concluded a successful funding round. On the face of things, it seems both absurd and unfair that large American companies regularly whittle down their tax bills, taking advantage of every loophole on offer. One study found that at least 55 big companies incurred no federal taxes at all on their profits in 2020. A proposal being discussed as The Economist went to press. And as the Democratic Party scrambled to fund its social spending package, seems to offer a popular solution. A minimum tax on corporate earnings as reported to shareholders, rather than as massaged down when reported to tax collectors.
The Democratic Republic of the Congo will hold an election in December, hopefully leading to a peaceful democratic transfer of power for the first time in the country's history. Sitting President Joseph Kabila came to power in 2001, having succeeded his father, Laurent Desiree Kabila, after his assassination. Joseph Kabila was elected as president in 2006 for a five-year term, and re-elected in 2011. Though his second term ended in 2016 and the DRC constitution prevents him from seeking a third term, elections were not held and Kabila remained in power. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released the first part of its latest assessment report. The Earth is warming. Even with a drastic reduction in greenhouse gas emissions temperatures will probably be 1.5 degrees Celsius above their late 19th century levels by 2050. Climate change is underway, the report laments, with all the environmental consequences that brings. The extent of the damage depends on the cumulative buildup of emissions and can be limited if the world strives for net zero carbon emissions. It might sound obvious that if you want to improve a robot's software, you should improve its software. Agram Gupta of Stanford University, however, begs to differ. He thinks you can also improve a robot's software by improving its hardware that is, by letting the hardware adapt itself to the software's capabilities. As they describe in Nature Communications, he and his colleagues have devised a way of testing this idea. In doing so, they have brought to robotics the principles of evolution by natural selection. They also cast the spotlight on an evolutionary idea that dates from the 1890s, 
but which has hitherto proved hard to demonstrate. European market is a tough terrain for food delivery firms. Delivery Hero has had a good run in the past couple of years. In August 2020 it s ascended to the DAX, the stock market index of Germany's most valuable listed firms. It is present in 50 countries on four continents. Revenue for the third quarter was 1.8 bn euros, 2 billion dollars, a jump of 89% compared with the same period in 2020. We grew 100% before Corona, 100% during Corona and we will grow 100% after Corona, says Niklas Ostberg, the Berlin-based firm's Swedish chief executive. By number of orders delivery hero is more than twice as big as DoorDash, its large American rival. The lives of distinguished people often take a lot of telling. Yet even devotees might raise an eyebrow at the heft of Sir Paul McCartney's memoir, two volumes totaling 960 pages. Casual Beatles fans may be surprised by the title, too. Though most would consider Sir Paul the band's best musician, with an honorable mention for George Harrison, John Lennon typically gets the plaudits for writing. In a poll by the BBC in 2001 to rank the greatest lyricists, Lennon received more than twice as many votes as McCartney.
Like every farmer Courtney Hammond, who grows blueberries and cranberries in Washington County, Maine, has a lot of worries. He frets about weather, invasive species, failed crops and global prices. To abide by federal food safety laws, he has had to do training, maintain meticulous records, have insect and rodent control plans and document daily the sanitation of his processing equipment. It is a tremendous amount of work but it means, he says, I don't have to worry about anybody getting sick from eating anything that leaves my farm. Now he is worried that a new law may put his hard work in jeopardy. Earlier this month 61% of voters opted to change the state constitution to ensure that all Mainers had a right to food, the first law of its kind in America. On August 4, explosives aboard two drones flying near Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro as he spoke in Caracas were detonated. Seven people were injured. Maduro has used the incident as a pretext to crack down on Venezuela's opposition by unleashing the regime's secret police. State Department spokesperson Heather Nauert said, the United States condemns the political violence that occurred on August 4 and urges the Maduro regime to respect the rule of law, exercise restraint, and safeguard the presumption of innocence for all accused. Even if the distribution of women's occupations matched that of men, if women were the doctors and men were the nurses, she calculates that at most a third of the pay gap would disappear. The most important cause is that women curtail their careers as a part of a rational household response to labor markets, which generously reward anyone, male or female, who is willing to hold down what Ms. Golden calls a greedy job. These are roles, such as those in law, accountancy and finance, that demand long and unpredictable hours. Parents need somebody to be on call at home in case a child falls ill and needs picking up from school, or needs cheering on at a concert or football match.
High staff churn is here to stay. Retention strategies require a rethink. In the not so distant past, bosses did not have to worry as much about their workforces. Newcomers could absorb the corporate culture osmotically. Workers' families were invisible, not constantly interrupting Zoom calls. Employees had a job, not a voice. Now firms have to be intentional. Management speak for thinking about everything from the point of the office to how staff communicate with each other. Retention is the latest area to require attention. The spike in staff departures known as the Great Resignation is centered on America. A record 3% of the workforce there quit their jobs in September. In 1945, while in a state of exhaustion, the mathematician John von Neumann had a kind of stammering premonition. He was in Los Alamos, working on the atom bomb, and he told his wife Clary that the energy source he was helping to develop would make scientists the most hated and also the most wanted citizens of any country. Then he informed her that his other ongoing project, the computer, would one day be even more important and potentially even more dangerous. Good biographies of some of the greatest mathematical minds are rare. Because they were polymaths, biographers who can interpret their manifold achievements for the ordinary mortal are themselves thin on the ground. This has been von Neumann's fate, and the upshot is that he has not had the recognition he deserves. The United States has confirmed that it will pull out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Washington has informed the United Nations, formally implementing a decision by President Trump in June. But the State Department said the U.S. would continue to participate in climate change meetings until the withdrawal process was completed. New research indicates that weather-related disasters could kill more than 150,000 people in Europe each year by the end of the century. The European Commission report estimated that heat waves would cause 99% of all weather-related deaths on the continent.
The Venezuelan authorities say they have suppressed what they termed a terrorist attack on an army base in the city of Valencia. Diosdado Cabello of the governing United Socialist Party said loyal troops re-established security at the base. Officials said seven people have been arrested and at least one of them died. Afghan officials say at least 50 people, including women and children, have been killed by militants in the northern province of Sari Pool. A spokesman told BBC that insurgents attacked security checkpoints and entered a village, killing civilians, among them women and children. He said Taliban and Islamic State fighters were involved, but Taliban has denied killing civilians. They say they killed 28 members of a local militia. Executive Vice President of the U.S. Government's Overseas Private Investment Corporation, OPIC, David Bohigian and other U.S. government officials traveled to Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia in August to promote U.S. investment in those countries. OPIC is the U.S. government's development finance institution. It mobilizes private capital to help address critical development challenges and in doing so, advances U.S. foreign policy and national security priorities. On August 14, the U.S. delegation met with Armenian Minister of Economic Development and Investments Artsvik Minajian. Within the past few minutes, the Election Commission in Kenya has declared that Tuesday's presidential election was won by the incumbent Uhuru Kenyatta. The opposition which has complained fraud has rejected the results. An opposition spokesman described the process as a masquerade. World leaders have expressed concern of the war of words between Washington and Pyongyang over North Korea's nuclear program. After President Trump said the U.S. military was locked and loaded, North Korea accused him of driving the situation to the brink of nuclear war. Russia, China and Germany have all appealed the calm and further diplomatic efforts.
even though they usually start to decrease this time of year. The average price for a gallon of gasoline in the United States hit $3.27 this week. That's its highest price in seven years, and it's almost double what it was last spring when roads and runways were nearly empty because of the COVID pandemic. There are several components to the price of gasoline, the cost of getting it to gas stations, federal and state taxes, the cost of refining it, the profits gas companies make, they all factor in, but the biggest chunk of what we pay, accounting for 43% of the cost of gasoline is the price of the crude oil gas is made from. And not coincidentally, crude is also at its highest price in seven years at just over $80 per barrel. After numerous conflicts, the family finally departs from home, and there is a brief pause as the automobile departs. All right, so where are we heading for dinner now? The driver inquires. As several voices give as many proposals, mayhem ensues. Tempers have raised, feelings have been hurt, and at least one person is grumbling by the time order is restored and a decision is reached. Twenty years ago, you would leave the house with the food in place fully decided, with no disagreements or objections, and everyone looking forward to the meal with similar zeal. The family's head made the decision, and the rest of the family followed suit. Every family member now gets a say in every decision, which fosters a sense of belonging and bonding. generation gap refers to the difference in how people of two generations think and perceive things, which leads to behavioral variances and, in some cases, conflict between them. In most families, there is a generation gap between parents and their children. It's not just because of the age difference, it's also because of how parents react to a given situation. Because they are young and undeveloped, children are unable to comprehend their parents' thoughts. Even if they are mature, many parents are unable to empathize with the shifting values and thinking patterns of the modern society. As a result, there is a communication gap between the two generations.
I received an unusual and extremely satisfying gift the other day. I was given a tree, or rather, a half dozen plants, to be planted on my behalf. I'd been asked to give a presentation to a group. The speaker is frequently given a modest gift after such gatherings. A pen or other useful item is sometimes given as a gift. The gift is frequently in the shape of a plaque or other similar token. Unfortunately, no matter how well intentioned, such gifts are doomed to collect dust in forgotten corners. Which is why I was pleased to be awarded a scroll attesting that trees would be planted in my name on a designated plantation developed for the purpose as part of the Green Movement. Globalization is a process that allows all countries to expand their markets, increase technological growth, and improve their economies. It is the method by which makers and producers of items or goods market their goods or services worldwide without restriction. It allows business people to make a lot of money since they can readily find low-cost labor in poor countries. It gives businesses a significant advantage in dealing with the global market. Globalization makes it possible to think of the entire world as a single market. By approaching the world as a global village, traders are expanding their regions of business. The state of being healthy encompasses the physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of one's being. It is the state in which the body and mind are performing their duties properly. Good health allows everyone to be more creative and contribute to society's well-being. He must thus be disease-free. Otherwise, if he does have a sickness, he must receive therapy for the entire body, mind, and soul. To put it another way, a doctor must have a sound approach to his or her patients. In modern days of specialization, doctors just treat a patient's immediate illness, treating it separately. Such a strategy contradicts the traditional adage that prevention is better than cure.
Computers are capable of performing highly complex tasks in all fields of study. They can solve the most difficult mathematical problems or organize thousands of seemingly unrelated information. These machines can be used in a variety of ways. They can, for example, provide tips on how to avoid traffic congestion. The term, automation, refers to the process of using machines to perform tasks for us. Humans may be able to enjoy greater leisure in the future as a result of automation. The arrival of automation will very certainly have far-reaching social implications. Sir Leon Bagright, an automation expert, pointed out a few years ago that it was a folly to imagine that these machines could think. It's no surprise that, in addition to the texts, nature is revered in many cultures. The message we receive is to safeguard the environment and keep ecological balance. People are taught to live in harmony with nature and to recognize the presence of God in all things natural. Nature has a lot to teach us. A river never ceases to flow. If it encounters a stumbling block in the shape of hefty rock, the river water fights to get it out of the way or finds another way to proceed. This teaches us to be progressive in our lives and to maintain our battling spirit. Snakes are revered because they consume insects that can harm our crops in the field, therefore protecting the grains for us. It's a long cry from the summer vacations I had as a kid. Every year, holidays meant returning to your hometown, logging in with the emotional headquarters of your extended family, and spending two months with a flock of uncles, aunts, and first and second cousins. This annual ritual of homecoming and validation appears to be centered on the fondest recollections of a generation's upbringing. Even as we scurried back into the cauldron of community and continuity symbolized by family, we offered unspoken apologies for the separateness required in being individuals. Summer vacation was a sticky period of oneness, when who we were and what we owned poured out of our separate selves into our collective selves.
The rise of this sector is aided by a number of factors, one of which is the presence of high-end facilities. We only realize how much better off we are in terms of infrastructure and quality when we travel to different nations. According to Dr. Rajendra Prasad, senior consultant neurosurgery, the country has the resources to be on the world map for medical tourism since it has a combination of all the appropriate components. India is also known for its wealth of talent, with doctors renowned for their experience and understanding. The latest medical technologies and drugs are on par with those found in the developed countries. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. You look worried. Is there any problem? You can share it with me. Actually I am worried about my exams. There is only one week left for it. And I think I have not studied anything. I'm feeling nervous. Oh, just focus on your studies and you won't face any problem. That's the problem. I can't concentrate. These all happened to me too and hence I started meditating. It had a radical effect on my concentration power. Thank you so much for your advice. I will surely follow it. The world outside does not determine our situations and conditions, it is the world within us that generates that outside. The mind, which is also known as the soul, is the source of self-awareness. The sum total of the states of awareness classified as cognition, volition, and feeling is known as the mind. Aside from self-awareness, we have the ability to select and think. No man resteth an instant in activity, Krishna declares. Even while we are passive on the physical level, we are always acting on the mental plane. As a result, observing oneself allows us to effortlessly mold our thinking. If our ideas are pure and noble, our actions will automatically follow suit. Our behaviors will mirror our thoughts if they are filled with jealousy, anger, and greed.
The reason for this is that the moon reflects very little sunlight, just around 7% of what it receives. The planet reflects almost half of the solar light it receives. Think about how dazzling the world must appear from the moon. In the earth light, one can even read a book on the moon. You don't have to go all the way to the moon to appreciate how powerful the earth's light is. Observe the crescent moon just after the new moon has passed. The sun shines brightly on the brilliant crescent. Earth light illuminates the rest of the moon. In other words, the Earth's reflected light falls on the moon. This is reflected back to us and is bright enough to reveal the moon. This effect diminishes as the crescent grows larger. Consider the American Indians use of wampum, the West Africans trade in manilas, and the Fijians economy based on whale's teeth, some of which are still legal tender. Add to that shells, amber, ivory, decorative feathers, cattle such as oxen and pigs, and a large number of stones such as jade and quartz, which have all been used for trade around the world, and we get a sense of the variety of accepted currency. This is a reasonable thing for a community to do as long as everyone involved can agree on a value. After all, the person who has what you require may not require what you are offering in exchange. That problem is neatly solved by money. Each exchange adds real value, and everyone benefits from the convenience. In these democratic times, public opinion reigns supreme. No government can withstand the pressure of a strong public opinion for an extended period of time. As a result, it is evident that the press controls public opinion, which in turn controls the government, and that the press, in turn, controls the government. It serves as a translator between the government and the people, bringing rulers and ruled closer together. The press serves as a public court as well. Through the medium of newspapers, all ills, corruptions, vices, scandals, and other issues are brought to the public's attention. The public's pressure can be applied on those who commit acts of wickedness and injustice.
while the panther prefers to stay hidden and cling to the forest's edge. Game animals like to congregate in open, large grazing pastures. Open expanses, which the panther avoids at all costs, are what game animals seek out on purpose. It's impossible to put into words the chaos that diverse creatures cause when they spot or suspect a panther nearby. The peacock on its perch, the jungle fowl on the ground, and the monkey on the treetops all join in the panther's denunciation. In their own unique tongue, they curse the panther. The resulting cacophony of sounds irritates the panther's sensitive ears to the point that it has no choice but to flee. As a result, the panther must deal with its ever-vigilant and vigilant companions, who show no mercy and expect none. Orangutans reside in Borneo and Sumatra's rainforests, where food availability is highly variable and unpredictable. The pickings are often feast or famine, much like fresh fruits from the garden. However, limited energy means that there is less energy available to accomplish things like grow and reproduce. As a result, orangutans develop slowly and reproduce slowly which is perilous evolutionarily because an orangutan could die before passing on its genes. Orangutans in the wild only breed every seven to eight years, but human mothers can have a kid every two to four years. Orangutans are among the most intelligent primates, employing a variety of sophisticated tools and elaborating sleeping nests made of branches and foliage each night. Overconfidence often leads to misadventures, jeopardizing one's opportunities in life. Any achievement, as is properly said, is the product of two factors, one's own personal planning and external support. People often consider only their own plans, ignoring external considerations. As a result, they can't predict what will happen next. As a result, there is a significant danger of failure. Then there's the issue of how to deal with overconfidence. The formula is straightforward. Before making a decision, talk to other knowledgeable individuals with an objective mind about the situation, and if it is proven that you are likely to stray from the path, accept reality and admit, I was mistaken.
Even non-poisonous species aren't fully free of poison. The poisonous secretions of the common sand boa, for example, are extremely dangerous to birds. As a result, the species takes no chances and crushes its victim before injecting poison. Do vipers require poison capable of killing hundreds of rats with a single drop? They only consume one or two at a time, after all. While hunting animals try their hardest to kill as quickly as possible, their prey tries any tactic they can think of to avoid becoming a meal, such as gaining poison immunity. Californian ground squirrels, for example, are immune to rattlesnake poison from the northern Pacific. The most important nutrient for our bodies is oxygen. It is necessary for the brain, nerves, glands, and internal organs to function properly. We may go weeks without food and days without drink, but without oxygen, we will perish within minutes. If the brain does not receive adequate amounts of this critical nutrient, all of the body's vital organs will deteriorate. The brain consumes the most oxygen of any organ. If it doesn't get enough, it causes mental drowsiness, bad thinking, and sadness, as well as visual and hearing loss. Because oxygen to the brain is limited in the elderly and individuals with clogged arteries, they typically become senile and hazy. They rapidly become annoyed. All regions of the body are affected by a lack of oxygen. The press serves as a teacher. It is responsible for shaping and forming public opinion. It makes public requests and airs public complaints. It protects the rights and interests of people. It raises its resounding voice in opposition to any attempt to infringe on people's rights and liberties. It serves as a check on the whims of individuals in positions of power. It exposes officials who are unethical, ineffective, and corrupt. All good and honorable causes are championed by it. It gives the administration a healthy tone by criticizing the actions and omissions of government personnel. Naturally, a country's government cannot ignore the media. It can't be dismissive of its point of view.
Now crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal, with instant scores and feedback for all the tasks. Along with the practice questions, access free sectional and full mock tests, and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies, and proven templates, click the link below and subscribe to our video course today.